Hey, I'm Mark Edward Lewis, and welcome to Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be talking about a very special thing that most of the time only music mastering engineers do, and that's being able to process center or mono information separately from stereo information. You're like, well, why would we want to do that? Well, you know, in music... The, you, know, you have a pre-baked bunch of tracks that are m mashed into a stereo uh, mold, and you know most of the time you can get away with just EQ and compressing that. But for us in the post-production audio space, we're usually taking surround sound files and mashing them into stereo. And although downmic plugins are really good these days, it still feels kind of monorally somehow. Somehow it, gets, it loses something. But being able to extract that center information, or in this case, mono information from a pre-baked stereo channel allows us all kinds of latitude that only music mastering engineers know about. And Adobe Audition, which is where we are now, has some really cool built-in tools to let us do that. So right now I've got a, a, you know, a stereo down mix from a 5.1 master from my TV pilot, Blade of Honor. I'll just play this for you dry. <laughs> I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged us. It's such a brick to 20 to 1? We can't survive this no matter how good we are. This is crazy. Hey, it's no crazier than the day we signed up for a galactic aviation. Come on, let out that arranged marriage anger of yours. There aren't enough terps in the galaxy for that. So there's a ton of information in there. Music, sound effects like crazy, ambiences, sound, uh, uh, and of course, dialogue all over the place. Well, theoretically, the dialogue came from the center channel in this down mix, so it should be dead mono. And everything else, you know, except for some of the bass drum information and some of that stuff, is going to be stereo. We want to process that mono information and give it some more punch while making the stereo, the non-mono, really, information, um, giving it kind of a, a nice sheen and a nice... Uh, uh, separate control. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing we need to do is copy information, uh, duplicate the information so we have a mono version of this track and a uh, non-mono version of this track. So we're going to click, we're going to hold down shift and option so it doesn't move in time and move this to another track. We're going to mute this one. We're going to call this one our mono and this one's going to be our non mono track. And I don't say stereo because they're both really stereo, but you know what I'm talking about. All right, so what we want to do is click here, go to the effects rack, and bring in the special stereo. There it is, center channel extractor. It's a pretty cool plugin, pretty easy to use. You say, I want to extract center. You can do anything you want, actually, but in this case, we want to just extract the center, and we want to uh, full spectrum, and we want the center channel level to be very, very strong compared to the, the side channel levels, is what they call it. Now, I want it to be far more than just 48 decibels. I want it to be a 96 decibel change, which means I need to actually pull down the side levels all the way at minus 48 dB and push the center channel up 48 dB. Now, if I hit play right now, you're going to get an earful of sound because we've basically boosted this channel 48 dB. So we don't want to hit play. We'll be wearing speaker cones. So we want to go to the next plugin spot in the effects rack and just add an EQ, a parametric EQ, which we're going to use later for its EQ uh, capabilities. But for now, we would just want to take this and reduce it 48 decibels so that we can get that center channel without blowing us away separate from the side channels. Here's what it sounds like. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged us. <laughs> So you're like, Mark, that sounds like crap. And I'm like, well, I know it does. But if you notice, it's doing a good job of hacking away at anything that is uh, not mono and pushing it out so that we only get that dialogue, full frequency dialogue, and the bass drums and these kinds of things. So we can process them separately. Now, here's something that you should know about the center channel extractor in Audition. And that is that although it's pulling mono information from your stereo channel, it's not leaving it mono. And we want the mono information to be dead in the middle of mono. And I'll show you how we know that. I'm going to go here to the master uh, channel here, which is where everything's going out. And I'm going to go to effects. Uh, I've already got my hard limiter, which you can see. And I'm going to pull up a waves stereo imager so that you can kind of see the imagery of what's happening here. 
Now this little meter here, if it's straight up and down, it means it's dead mono. And then of course, if it's hard left and hard right, it goes over to the 45 degree axis. And then anti-phase, things that might not be mono compatible, but super wide, go out here. Now we're just listening to the, you know, here I'll move back up so we can see. We're just listening to the center channel extractor, which should theoretically be pulling out only mono things and leaving them mono. but look what happens. <laughs> I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged that. Now you see how this little orange ring, this is kind of the leftover. See how that is not mono at all. It, it's, it has a little bit of width. We don't want that. So we want to fix that immediately. We're gonna to go to stereo imagery, stereo expander, but we're gonna use the stereo expander to de-expand and make everything mono in this track. Now watch this. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged It's dead mono now. In fact, it's so dead mono that you can hardly see it because it's going up and down on this vertical axis so perfectly, and that's what we want. So we need to put in the stereo expander next. All right, so we're, we're having fun here. Let's move this out of the way, and we've got this working. Now I want to add some low end, some low frequencies. So that's very easy. We know how to do that. I'm going to use the low band shelf at about just below the voice range, somewhere in the 85 or the LFE zone. And that's pretty good because some of that LFE power we're going to lose when we do a down mix. So we want to add some of that back in this stereo output. Let's see how we do. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged okay, Let's move to here. The music. And that's pretty cool. Now, we're still in mono, this mono mode. And by the way, we're processing this completely separately from anything that's happening in the non-mono track. And we're going to get to that in a second. Now, I want to snap up kind of make those low, punchy, low, low frequencies really, really snappy. And I want to contour some of those upper highs because they're kind of all over the place to my ear. So we're going to bring in, instead of doing EQ, we're going to do a multi-band compressor, which does a lot of fun things for us, including balancing, but also in multi-bands. So I'm going to use eh, somewhere around 100 hertz, and I'm going to do the same thing, this middle, this band here, these, this band and the high sibilant band we're going to leave alone for now. Um, so this band, I'm going to make it a pretty strong ratio, maybe a 5 to 1, a pretty snappy mid-short attack and a very short release. And if you don't have really good speakers or you're not on some headphones like these cinema sound headphones, it's going to be hard for you to tell what I'm doing because it's really, really low frequencies. But we're going to solo the low frequency track and see what we get. Here comes that bass drum. And that's good. And then we're going to raise up. So we're, we're doing a, whoops, we're doing a reduction of about minus six or so. And even more. Yeah. So we're going to compensate for that by adding gain to it. Maybe a little bit more, maybe eight dB, give it a little extra bump. Now, if I turn this off, see if you notice the difference. You got to be listening on good speakers, but you can hear that's kind of flubby. The bass drums are kind of going, whoa, 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 whoa. But if I turn it back on, it's snappier. Super, super snappy. Cool. We added the mix of all the mono. I think the bear snagged that. Really, really snappy. Now we want to do a nice, easy contouring in this band. I think the bear snagged that with a slow attack and a slow release. I think the bear snagged that. Such a brick to 20 to 1. I think the bear snagged that. So that's in about a minus, that's about minus three, so we'll raise this again to compensate. I think the bear snagged that. And now if we unsolo. Like that. Twenty to one. We can't survive this no matter how good we are. This is crazy. And turn the whole thing off. The bear snag that. Such a brick to twenty to one. And on. We can't survive this no matter how good we are. This is crazy. Off. 
it's no crazier than the day we signed up for on. Galactic Aviation. Come on. See how it just kind of smooths out and adds a little nice edge to that dialogue and of course snaps up the low, low frequencies for the bass drum and explosions in a really, really nice way. So we're going to leave this here. We've made the mono very, very mono after extracting it. We've added some low frequencies. We've snapped up the low frequencies and we've added a little high, mid, kind of nice balance to it. Now let's take a listen to the non- mono bits. We're going to mute the mono and go to non-mono. I think the bear snagged that. Cool. We're going to put in the channel, the, the mono channel extractor. Sorry, the, the mono channel. That's funny. The center channel extractor. There we are. Center channel extractor. And now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to turn down the center channel, turn up the side levels 48 dB. We're going to bring in the EQ. Do, 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 like this. We're going to drop it the same, otherwise we get an earful, 48 dB. And we're just gonna leave that alone. Now you're like, well, that sounds a whole lot better, Mark. Why does the side channel stuff sound so much better than that mono extraction? Well, it actually doesn't. It's actually the opposite of all that artifacture happening on the side channel stuff. So that when you bring them together, there's almost no artifacture, which is a really weird thing. It's kind of the nature of how we do this splitting. But to also notice, you've already noticed there's no dialogue, very, very little dialogue, except within the room. And then, of course, no bass drum, no nothing in the, from the center channel. It's all gone, all up in this channel up here. All right, so we want to uh, leave that center. I mean, you can see here what the center channel or the, the side channels are doing. Tons of stuff that's here, and we might want to help that just a little bit. Without getting too mono incompatible, we'll do the stereo expander and we'll use it the way it's supposed to be done. I'll just show you what it's like really, really wide. Mono. Regular. And we'll just add a little bit of expansion. And some of you are like, hey, I heard the dialogue in there. Well, what you're actually hearing is the room, because they're in a cockpit. You're hearing the room that we added, then that's definitely not mono. We ran that around the quad of surround, so that's what you're hearing. But the actual direct mono mo dialogue is not in there. Now we're going to go back to our good old friend, the multi-band compressor. We're going to leave the low frequencies alone, but we're going to deal with kind of that roar area, uh, that roar kind of here, this stuff. Because there's a lot of junk in there that we want to just kind of contour. Again, a very slow, we're doing contouring one, a very slow attack, very slow release and an easy uh, ratio. Otherwise, it starts getting artifacty. And the reason we're using this band on the sides, if you will, is because um, that sometimes those side frequencies can have this kind of kind of this uh, wet kind of, I'm using really awful terms, but wet kind of muddy kind of sound. And we want to keep that under control, not kind of blasting all over the place on those side channels while we leave it nice and punching through on the mono. It depends on the program material, but I'm just showing you how you can do this and have a lot of control over your master outputs. And all of this can be dumped onto your master output for that matter if you choose or do it by a busing. Let's see how our ret retention here is. Looks like about minus five, so we'll return about a minus five on the gain. And we'll also do a little control on the high frequency, the high highs, which will run down to about 6K, sibilance. Nice and easy. Nice, easy contour for the loud stuff. Kind of hard to listen to, but only have to listen to it for a second. Okay, and then let's see if I turn it on and off. Off. On. And one more time. On. Off. Yeah, it's very subtle. I might bring up those highs just a little bit more, maybe another decibel.
And what we're doing is contouring this band and this band on the wides, and then on the mono, bring this one up, we're contouring, we're actually giving some thump to the low frequencies and managing the high frequencies there. If we were to do all bands, you could, and get two different settings and have a real control. I just don't want it to feel punchy and, and whooshy. I want it to kind of layer in between the wides and the mono and give it a nice branding. Uh, a nice field, stereo and frequency-wise. Let's bring them all together. Let's see what we get. I think the bear snagged that. Such a brick to Twenty to one. We can't survive this no matter how good we are. This is crazy. It's a little crazier than the day we signed. So now we have a really nice wide mix, and some of you aren't convinced, and that, uh, that happens both in mastering and color correction when you're like, did anything really happen here? I really can't tell. Well, let's go back to the original. I'm going to turn off all the plugins and mute the non-mono channel. Here's what we get. I think the bear snagged that. And then we'll turn it back on really fast. I think the bear snagged that. Off. 20 to 1. We can't survive this no matter how good we are. This is crazy. Hey, it's a little crazier on. than the day we signed up for a galactic aviation. Come on. Let out that arranged marriage anger of yours. There aren't enough terps in the galaxy for that. On. Well, then, you got nothing to worry about. Cut the chatter, you two. Blades come left to 045316. This is just gonna on. hurt. Trust your gut. On. Feel your ship. And don't you dare arrest with any ordinance left on board. Off. Great Realtar. I'll see you soon. On. Come on. Let's do this. Wow. It's a huge but yet subtle difference. The, the lows are just pumping away and the nice mid-range is being taken care of and the highs are being controlled. So using this kind of a mono separation center channel extractor, processing them differently gives you all kinds of latitude in mastering. And you can, like I said, do this on your stereo down mixes and get some really wonderful... Um, makeup, if you will, for having to take your beautiful surround mix and dumbing it down. And if you've done any of this kind of thing in music mastering, which they do all the time, let us know on the cinemasound.com forum or on our secret, well, not so secret anymore, Facebook group. Until then, we'll see you in the mastering studio. Even if you're